This video is the third in a series that I'm creating about installing a trailer hitch and trailer wiring on my 2015 Tesla Model S 85D. If you're interested in seeing the why and the parts and the costs associated, then I'll put a card above for a uh, video that I made about that. And then also, if you're interested in seeing how to install the trailer hitch part, then I'll put another card above now just for you to see that. In today's video, I'm going to be showing how I did the trailer wiring. Now this uh, was all kind of one big project combined because to do the trailer wiring, I needed to have the bumper off anyway to be able to route the cables out of the car and across the bottom of the car. The trailer light wiring module that I chose requires its own 12 volt power supply because it does not tap directly into the power that's in the back of the Tesla. And so I ran that wire out this vent here on the driver's side and then up to the front of the car. If I were to do this again, I would recommend taking it out of the passenger side vents and then up to the front using the same method that I did. The reason for that is because the Tecancho trailer light wiring modules have different length of wires and the one that goes over to the left blinker reaches over there on that side. Uh, but the one for the tail lights needs to be on the right side because it's shorter. As part of this overall project, I'm taking advantage of this new electrical circuit into the back of the car and I'm going to be installing these two 12 volt fans. If you're interested in seeing how that goes, I'm going to create a different video about that and I'll put a card above here once that has been uploaded. Also, if you subscribe to my channel and change that bell notification to all, you will get notified automatically every time I upload a new video. This is the 12 volt wire coming right there. It's coming along the side of the battery. There's a zip tie right there. I'll be cutting that short, of course. There are holes along the edge here that about every 12 inches that you can put a zip tie. So you can see down the length of this, I have a zip tie about every foot. I undid some clips here, some of the traditional uh, automotive clips. There was one right here, here and here and was able to get this felt pulled out. And I was able to use a uh, traditional device for fishing cable through walls. You can see this right here, it's a fish tape for electricians. So I was able to push this fish tape between this felt all the way up and around to the engine bay there. It was a little difficult, but it actually worked surprisingly well. This is the cover that I took off. This cover just comes right out. It's, it doesn't even have any attachment points or bolts or screws or anything. I was able to push that fish tape up right here past this windshield wiper fluid fill area and the, the end of the fish tape hit right down there. So I was able to get that up through here and then I tied this string to it and then pulled the string back down to the bottom. I couldn't figure out how to fish from the top down so I just fished from the bottom up and then tie the string to it, pull the string back down. So then I tie the string to the end of the, the wire that I'm trying to get up here for the trailer wiring. And I tied some tape around it so that you can just pull it back up through. And as you can see here, it is pulling right up through that hole. So if I show you the wire right there, I can pull this all the way up. All right, so this is how it looks tightened up. You can see the wire right there. This is the 12 volt wire. And I was able to pull back this plastic a little bit so it kind of just gets tucked in right there so it's nice and tight. And from here is going up inside and behind this felt and up into the uh, what would normally be the engine bay. But it's the front area in this car. And then now I'm going to be taking out the front liner and we'll get it attached to the 12 volt battery. The first thing we're going to do is remove the uh, trunk seal over around here. So you just pull back on this inner edge and you pull at an angle. You don't pull straight up but you pull at an angle because the front uh, edge here is angled at this angle. So we're just going to go around pulling up on this, just like that, and then we'll set this aside. Once we have removed the seal, what we need to do is remove the front light, which is right here above the uh, inside trunk release button. So you just reach around here behind the carpet, and there you can see is a clamp. So you just pull back on that, it just pops out just like that. The light itself will probably just stay embedded in the carpet. There is also a clip right here that needs to get undone, which is the clip that allows this button right here to be pressed, which is a emergency release mechanism for the frunk. Once you have undone those two wires up here in the front, then this frunk liner easily just comes right out. 
On an unrelated note, once you've taken out that liner, you can see this is where the toe point is located. And this is for, uh, if you need the car to get towed, you can take off this front cone, at least on this version of vehicle. And about right over here on the side, there is a hole that it screws into. And it is a counter uh, rotating uh, screw. It, it's the counterclockwise turn that screws it into that hole. At this point, we now need to undo two bolts that are right here and two that are up here. The two that are up here are 13 millimeter sockets and the two that are down here are 8 millimeter sockets. Surrounding the frunk liner on all these sides are these plastic panels. This top plastic panel comes out just like this. It doesn't have anything holding it in place other than the pressure of the frunk so that you can easily just lift out of it. On the side here are these little clamps. And with these, the plastic here on the side goes right here in this bottom part of the clamp. And so if you exert a little bit of pressure, you can actually just pop the plastic out of this area. And there are a couple of them. There's three on this side and three on the other side. Once you've undone the three on one side though, you can just pull to the side and this whole thing will easily lift out. And now that we have the frunk out of the way, we can see the whole interior of our Tesla here, the whole frunk area and all the mechanics that are behind the scenes here. What we're after in this case is the 12 volt battery right here and we're going to be taking this trailer wire, which I already ran up here, and we're gonna be connecting this to the 12 volt battery on the positive side. The 12 volt battery has this uh, plastic cover on it and just has a little clasp on the inner side you can pop off easily with a screwdriver. This is what came with the, the wiring kit and it has a, a place where a fuse goes right here. So these wires aren't actually connected to each other at the moment. So what we want to do first is take one of these yellow things and we take off the, the end there and we put this in there on the end. We want to clamp down on this to ensure that these don't come apart and that there's good contact there. So squeeze that real good. And now you can see this is on there. This is our hot wire that's going to be going back to the rear of the car. So I'm going to pull insulation off of that and then we can put that in here. We clamp down on this piece of metal right here and it will ensure that we have a good solid connection with the wire beneath just like that. So with these two wires now combined you can give it a tug, make sure it's tight and then if you have a heat gun you can heat up the ends of the plastic here and it will ensure a weather tight fit there. As you can see here I heat shrinked the connection there. I was able to just use a lighter because I don't have a heat gun so that works too. We also have um, a, an additional fitting that we need to put on the end of here. We have this this ring here so we put that on the end just like that and then clamp down on this. So what we have now is this ring this part of the wire, then we have where the fuse goes, more wire, and then where it connects to the line going into the back of the car. I have now connected the wire right here to this terminal through this back connection point right here. The, the reason why I did this is because I wanted it to be as far back as possible so that this will go up here, which then makes it easier to access if I need to change out the fuse in the future with just taking off this uh, panel right here, it won't require me to take out this whole frunk liner. Uh, now in doing so, this cover that goes over the battery won't go on. It normally would cl cl clamp on about right there, but it, it won't go past this wire. So I'm gonna have to <coughs> create a notch right here. I tied down the excess cabling so that it doesn't rattle around. And that is where it goes down into the tire well. Now that I've connected that wire up front, I can put my positive lead here on the end of the wire and I can touch my negative here to the body of the car and it is showing that I'm getting 14.23 volts. I have the car torn apart and I have figured out the wires that I'm going to be using. So I'll demonstrate that test here right now. Um, I have Lucy up here <laughs> and she's going to push the brake pedal for me. Okay, And then back here, All right, I've got Lydia holding the camera here for me. This is the hot wire that's coming out of the Tecansha uh, trailer uh, light module. 
This is the hot lead that's going up to the 12 volt battery in the front of the Tesla. So I'm going to temporarily um, put these together just loosely with that so I can do a quick test. And now I'm going to have Lucy push the brake pedal. So here is the trailer wiring harness and I have this tester light on it. Okay Lucy go ahead and push the brake pedal. So when the two right lights light up, that's the left turn and right turn signals, and that's the indicator that the brake light is coming on. And now we're going to check the turn signals. So Lydia, go ahead and push it down. There you go, the middle one there is the left turn signal. Okay, now push it up. There you go, and that's the right turn signal that is blinking there. So go ahead and push it back down, Lydia. The only problem that I'm having is that uh, the tail light here on the left isn't working. So right behind the rear tail light here are the wires that I'm tapped into. And this one right here is the red wire and that is that has the left turn signal module on it. Over here on the right side there is the black and brown wire that this module is on and this is the right turn signal sensor. And those are the only two that are being used right now to be able to get the brake lights and the right and left turn signals. So over here are the other two. I have a stop light right there, which as you see is unnecessary because it's fulfilled by the right and left turn signals. Um, and this one is the tail light connector. And that the tail light is the one I would like to have working so that if we happen to need to pull something at night, uh, the running lights would be on. Um, but I have tested and tested all the wires that are here and it doesn't work with any of them. So I think what I would need to do is connect it to the running lights that are here in this part because these are not part of the blinker and these were, would be on constantly. But the logistics of the wire going all the way down the lid here and then down here to this hinge and then back down here is longer than these wires are in this wiring harness. Maybe I can get at them in this area. Uh, I'm gonna look into it, but I don't necessarily wanna tear the whole car apart. Something to take note of is you can see an arrow right here on this sensing clip from the uh, trailer wiring harness. And that arrow needs to be pointing toward the tail light, not away from it. Uh, and then once the wire is going through that, I'm gonna get this all taped up and secured, and then we'll put things back together. So good news, I figured it out. The wire that I had traced was the correct one. Let me show you what I found. This wire, which is a blue wire with a purple stripe going down it. There's 25 wires here, and luckily for me, the fifth one I tried worked. That goes in here into the car, and then underneath this headliner here, there's some metal there, and I was able to, on the inside, trace it, and it was this bundle of wires that actually comes down here, and I don't know how well you can see there, but I was able to put the clamp on that same wire down here and I just tested the lights and it works. Hey uh, Lucy, can you go ahead and turn the headlights on? So there you can see it's on and go ahead and turn it off and it's back off and that's the tail lights. So that's exciting to me. I've isolated it down out of those 25 options. So this is the running light clamp right here. I'm going to work on getting that position. It's pretty tight quarters in there for such a bulky clamp. Uh, you can see the wire or the, the arrow right here is pointing up, so that's pointing toward the tail light. And then this wire right here goes to it, and it's close enough that it will be able to reach the main uh, controller box right there. I figured out where it will actually fit, because where I had it before for testing purposes was right here, and that's where a screw goes in and the confines were just too tight. So I was able to move it down a little bit, and that's where the tail light clamp is now. And I just isolated that one wire out of that bundle coming down and got that uh, bluish pink wire out and put that clamp there and then that clamp's wire now runs down over this way to the main controller. And then the other wire that goes to the, the driver's side tail light blinker comes down here. I have it routed across there, across the back of the trunk area, and then it connects to the uh, wiring harness right there. And then the one for the passenger side blinker is clipped right there. And that's going onto the tannish kind of gray wire that's black, if you can see that. And then the uh, brake uh, light uh, clamp is not needed 
right here. That's the, the stoplight clamp, and that's not needed, so I'm gonna just tuck that up over there. I've completed putting this plastic piece back on. The uh, clamp for the running lights is behind this right there. And uh, this is a uh, bolt that has to come out as well as right here and right here and right here. And then there's another one that is right up there, right in the middle of the screen there. So once you take all those out, then you can get to it. I've run the wire now for the sensor to come down here and zip tight it to try to avoid any rattles. And so there's another zip tie here and then another one here and then that comes over this way So now here's the main controller brain for the Tecancha uh, wiring uh, for the trailer and I wrapped the uh, Brake sensor which I'm not going to use. I wrapped it in the padded foam that comes with this uh, device It's this stuff right here So it's sticky on the back here once you peel off that paper and you're supposed to wrap each of these uh, sensors with one, probably just to avoid rattles. So I put that here, and then I've uh, zip tied all of this uh, excess wiring here so that it will be contained and out of the way and not rattle. And then coming off this way, I'm just now starting to zip tie across here. This is the ground wire, this white one, and it comes right here. And then I used this bolt here, which is what holds the tail light on, to uh, ground it. And so that's pretty simple. And then here's the sensor wire that's going to the uh, turn signal right here. So this is the sensor block there. I've wrapped it in foam and then also wrapped it in electrician's tape here. Then this right here is the wire that's going to the other side of the car to the other tail light for the left blinker. I'll be continuing to go along this route, getting everything tightened up. This right here is just a wire for the, the accent lighting back here. This right here is the main uh, the hot wire for the wiring harness and that's right there and I've put on the connectors that came here with the um, trailer wiring kit that is the the additional kit and uh, so clamped these two together in there so those are done and then I'll be running this down this area here I've got the uh, carpet pushed back and all the wires tucked in I still need to get some of the plastic parts back but I wanted to show here that there's a hole up there already in the carpet. I didn't cut that. And it was really just used for nothing. Uh, I think it's supposed to have a cap that was lost before we bought the car. So in any case, this is where I have the auxiliary uh, power port hanging out from that we're going to use to power our fans back here and potentially anything else that we want to power back here. And then this is the trailer wire, of course. And so with it coming out of that hole, it can come like this along the side of the car and can be hanging out of the car like this to use with the trailer. I have the power wire and the uh, sensor for the blinker on the left side coming along and I took this piece of uh, plastic off and I have it the wires running behind this um, padding here just to make sure they don't rattle all the way across to this side and then here is where I am now and I'm just passing them up here into this back corner area. Right here is the sensor for this blinker on this side and I've wrapped, I've wrapped it with the foam padding that it came with and the electrician's tape, and then tucked the wire up there so that it doesn't move around at all. So I'm now going to get the carpet put back together here on this side, and then we'll get all the plastic put back together, and then we'll be done. This corner piece right here, uh, to get it off, what it looks like on the inside is this. So there's uh, two pins over here on the right side and one pin over here on the left side, and then this plastic piece right here goes on that yellow piece. That's what you need to align with when you're putting it back together. And when you're taking this off, it seems to pop off fairly easily. When you're getting the rubber here back uh, uh, sorted properly, you can put any old socket in there and then it just conveniently just gets this put right back in its place without very much effort. To get this panel off right here, there is a screw right here. It's a T25 screw head, Torx, you have to take that off. And then on the inside, there is uh, a, a cl clip right there that goes into that slot, that vertical slot there. Uh, and then there's a horizontal clip here. And then there's two horizontal clips over here that go into those two slots. And then of course that X there goes into that middle hole. So just get all of that lined up and then just press it and it'll clip back on and then screw the screw back on underneath. 
I have everything put back together and it works. It makes me so happy. If you check out right here, this is what I did. The uh, wires are tucked up there on that shelf. I'm probably gonna put them up in that hole there. The, the, the 12 volt power port that I'm gonna be using for uh, accessory back here in the back of the car, uh, for fans probably mostly, but also like when camping or anything, anytime I want electricity in the back, I'll just leave hanging like that or when I'm not using it, I'll push it up in that hole as well. But all of the plastic work is put back together and it looks great. You can't even tell I did anything, and that's the goal. This is a real guitar. Yeah. The girls came out to serenade me while I was working on the wiring in the car. That's great playing, girls. Thanks for sharing.